many of us who get into gaming or the miniature wargaming territory, a lot of us start initially and almost immediately into, say, 40k or into Age of Sigmar. They're the games that Games Workshop says, hey, this is our main staple of a game. Lately, I've been trying to get my hand back into 40k and any Age of Sigmar, and I found that the the battle or the road or the ability to even get to a place where you can play a game is actually a very long and difficult road. I mean, difficult, it's not really, but it definitely takes some time and some effort. There's lots of models that you've got to build, lots of things you've got to paint, an army composition that you've got to put all together, and then you've got to find some willing compatriot of yours to also do the exact same thing. And that's not as always easy as you think it would be to do so. Also, painting armies is, whew, that is something that I have some difficulty with. And games that have less miniatures for me to play, I find are much easier for me to get to table, to play, to have them fully painted, and to get other people involved. So yes, welcome to Warhammer Underworlds, which is their card-based action game utilizing very small but unique warbands with a bunch of lovely models. You can paint them, you can look at them, you can talk to them while you're sleeping. The nice thing about Warhammer Underworld, especially from a painting perspective, partly is that A, well, it's very different. It plays differently than most of the other games, but it still utilizes the same amazing miniatures that you're going to get in the other games. You get each warband and they'll come in a box like this, for instance, which and they're not very expensive. It's about $35 roughly to my knowledge. And you're going to get anywhere from three guys to five or six, or seven different ones and each of them are going to be unique sculpt. And what I really like about that as a painter is that it allows you to try different things out. Say for these three different squads that I've painted, I tried three different things. Some models I get to work with skin, some other models I get to work with OSL, other ones I get to work with non-metallics. Um, working with non-metallic golds or non-metallic silvers or trying a ghostly ethereal effect. Those are things I wouldn't normally get a chance to paint. It actually improves your painting skills because you're sort of contemplating, trying to figure out how to do it, and you're opening your mind to painting more and various different kinds of things, different textures, different fabrics, and all of those things can help you improve as a painter. These sculpts here are specific to Warhammer Underworld and not to any other game. And the models are obviously Games Workshop level, so they're awesome. And so slowly I have been building up a little collection of guys in which that I have them fully painted. And I'm pretty proud with some of them, and some of them I'm a little less so, but you know, that's kind of how the world works. I've been painting the Stormcast Eternals from the original Underworld box, and it has like the, I can't remember what they're called, the Briar Queen, Briar Thorns. They're undead, they're ghostly, they don't really walk, they float. And then I have the Zinch Squad here as well, which is my most recent one that I've painted. And then I've got these two boxes here, which I haven't painted. They're still in their box. And at some point I'm going to get them out. And I'm going to do something kind of different for each one of them that I'm painting up. Partly it gives me the chance to try different things out. So it was interesting, you know, painting these fire guys that were just on fire. And I'm like, well, how do I do that? I've never painted anything that's just on fire. So there you go, it's my first time trying. Or doing purple magenta, like little OSL with this uh, blue horror of some sort. As well, you know, with these guys, I was like trying to make them feel ghostly and stuff like that. And this model here is kind of a special model for me. This is my first real crack at painting to as high a level as I could. I took lessons from a very well-known miniature painter to try and help me understand and progress as a painter because that's what I want to do. I want to become a better painter. So learning OSL and non-metallic metals and creating textures and ambience and stuff like that. So I thought it was, it's a really cool, and I really put a lot of time and effort into this specific model. Less so with its two, with its two fellows, but this one, poof, I mean like easy, many, many days over the course of probably a couple of weeks. Those are things that I kind of have learned or have done through painting these. You grow from it and you get better, you add it to your repertoire and then you increase that knowledge as you go.
It's a great game. Um, I don't play it nearly as much as I would like to. I tend to try and push myself more towards Kill Team because I'm a bit more of a sci-fi person than I am sort of a fantasy buff, but still think it's a cool thing. And whatever gets you to being able to paint and play is where you want to be. Do any of you guys play Warhammer Underworlds or do you play the bigger games only? Have you tried just painting different squads for the fact of like learning to paint different things? So yeah, let me know what you guys think. Do you guys like the models that I've done so far? I've got one of these two. I'm thinking about picking which one to start, but I don't know yet. Do you have a preference? You're like, I should definitely do the Gobos or should I do the Dwarves? Mm -hmm.